Uh, our goldenrod crop did not develop this year, which a lot of people depend on to feed their bees. So if you're not feeding your bees, uh, you better be checking the weight. See, you know, if you heft it from behind, if you don't have any weight, it's feather light, uh, you're not going to have any bees if you don't do something about it. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to use two kinds of windbreaks. I need to thank Jim. I was over to their house last week. And Jim, I steal ideas, by the way. I think all of us need to be sponges, and when we see something going on, and we think it's a good idea, adapt it to our own bees. And so Jim was talking about, well, wouldn't, you know, some kind of a canvas or something uh, behind my bee, uh, you know, be a good wind protector instead of straw? Sure. I have an old piece of canvas, as you can see, it's all tore up, the holes in it, mice have eaten holes in it. I just grabbed the thing, folded it in half, because if I had it not folded, there are slits and all kinds of stuff in it, and it's really no good. It should be thrown out, but it does do a good job here of protecting. Now notice something that we did. We stretched it across the back of this A-frame hive, then we had a wing go out, so that we can catch some of the wind that would hit this other, the other two hives. If we have enough extra straw, we will put straw over there too. I picked up nine bales of straw. And uh, what we'll do is we'll set bales of straw behind these hives, stack them up so that they're just a little higher than they cover. Because uh, we want the wind to blow over them. And if we have extra straw, then we'll put it over there. Okay, uh, and I actually think we're going to have extra straw because I think one bale here and here uh, ought to pretty well cover. Most will use maybe four bales. Well, I'm trying to think that maybe we can get by with five. Maybe we might set one up right on the end. Uh, and I did not get them today, but another thing you might do is take rebar. You can buy rebar and just drive it down through the bales so the bales don't topple over during the winter. And, uh, Terry, if you can just set it up there. I'd like to leave just a little bit of room behind the hive uh, so we can get top covers off and work them if we're going to work them. Yeah. The idea is just to break the air. Now, I, I think really enough room to walk behind each hive and don't need to manipulate it yet. <laughs> we got the attention of the cows yeah. behind you. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to come through that fence this winter. Yeah. <laughs> they smell strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not hay, folks. Yeah, it's yeah. Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if cows are not known for all well, their math, mathematical acumen. Joy is a farm girl, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> She's got uh, all the genes that it takes to. And the overalls. <laughs> Ow. Right. Okay, we've got plenty of straw in the <laughs> What's that do? Make it more stable? <clears throat> that, that makes the end stable, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We don't have it sitting on the end. This right up to that fence. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. It's probably going to get the most wind up here anyway. Yeah. This will be good. We've got one more bale coming, I think. Oh, 
How many of you drive down the road on garbage day and you see a bunch of stuff laying out? I did, but then I got married. <laughs> you picked her up. <laughs> but this uh, is snow fence, more or less, and it will serve as a windbreak. It's got a lot of holes going through it, but it it cuts down the velocity of the wind somewhat. And what I thought we could do. And I picked this up along the road, so... Uh, if anybody wants any extra, uh, what I thought we could do is just set it up behind our, our bales. And uh, I'm going to pick this over. And go behind here. If you want to just hold that. These bushes will hold it up just fine. Okay. Well, I'll Okay, well, we'll just walk behind this fence, too. The more wind we can knock down, the better it is. And since we've got... You know I'm trapped. <laughs> well, you know how high a mouse jumps. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's seen better days. Oh, is it even alive anymore? Not so sure it is. <coughs> There's plenty adequate. Uh, now, you could wrap your hives in black tar paper. We'll do at least one or two of these. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the weaker ones? I'd like to stay away from the ones that have the, the experiment mm -hmm. going on. But, uh, you know, some people oftentimes ask, you know, is it okay if I wrap my hive? And I'll give you one example. When I was a bee inspector in Delaware County, we had a brand new beekeeper who went and bought, I don't know, R30 insulation <laughs> and wrapped this around the hive and then took a plastic garbage bag so that it would be, you know, tight. You made a and cemetery. draped it all over so the fiberglass wouldn't get wet. And in the spring of the year, he came out expecting to find his hive very much alive and very strong, and instead found the bees dead and in a rainforest. Oh dear. 